Hello and welcome to Film Seizure, week three of our tour of Italy 2. Um, I love the first trip so much. I hid in Jason and Jeff's suitcase and went to Italy with them the first time. I'm pretty sure that's how I got there. I um, said, Mama. Oh, yeah, I said, Hey, it's a me, a mama. <laughs> mama. <laughs> um, yeah, I loved it so much the first time. I wanted to do it again. So this is my second choice of the month. It is Knife of Ice, uh, the fourth movie in the partnership between Carol Baker and Umberto Lenzi. Umberto um, Lenzi. Umberto Lenzi. That, guy, that, that, that guy is uh, South African, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, so, name, that, that name sounds pretty, pretty African. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, he's, only, he's an expat. Yeah. He's an expat from, from yeah. South Africa. From South Africa in Italy. Yeah. yeah. But he's okay. also an Italian <laughs> film director. Um, oh, that's where he started working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, I could have yeah. sworn he might have even been Chinese. But anyway. Yeah. So this is Knife of Ice is one of the earliest, I'd say, giallos that I watched because I went into crazy mode early. <laughs> um, with Gallows and I bought this Lindsay Baker box set from Severin tore through it like a cr- lunatic in like three days um, did you wear gloves and, while you were tearing through it no um, I didn't need to because I wasn't killing anybody but you were killing that box I was killing that box you're right Jesus I didn't even think of that um, but this of ice. a knife of ice but I do need to make that distinction here for myself um that i love that box set and i think i still do love that box set but i have a far greater exposure Mm. to giallo now i'm not making an excuse for this film but it's not on the level that i thought it was um that's not to say i don't like it but i do have more problems with it than i did the first time i watched it that's neither here nor there yet this is a first time watch for both of you, correct? Yes. Do I'm you gonna, have any I'm, initial? I'm, I'm going to play the oh, part. Uh, I'm going to play the part of Jason Oliver in this episode. What? And say that. What? <laughs> are you going to fix it? Uh, fix there, it? I, I don't know if you can. Um, <laughs> I I wasn't super into this movie. I think there are lots of very good things to this movie. Um, I struggled to get into it and it's not because of why you might think I would struggle to get into it. Um, uh, the opening credits while not, not savory was not the reason why I couldn't get into it. I can't, I can't really explain why. Um, but there why. are lots. It's an Italian movie. No, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't like those. Um, <laughs> But no, I, I just, um, I, um, I don't know if it was the pacing or if I expected it to pick up and it never really did. I don't know. I don't know. That's fair. Um, <laughs> there's, Any... some, there's some bonker shit in this movie. Though. <laughs> oh, for this sure. Is a, this is a weird movie. I, I, I liked it until i didn't if that makes sense like i was with this movie from the from the beginning i was kind of like digging on it um and then it kind of it got real bonkers and that was cool and then it just sort of fizzled out um but i did i think mostly like this movie even though i don't think it makes much sense yeah i think a lot of for me like the great great i'm using that word like nothing is great in this movie in my opinion but a lot of the good stuff is early on yeah i do think the end of this movie kind of saves it Mm -hmm. as well but it's the execution is really weird at times and i have that's part of like i guess my education in giallo or italian i'm not allowed to call it cinema so i'll call it italian movie (laughs) um I always, <laughs> I, I always love the idiosyncratic nature of it. 
like when I first started watching these, like the weirdness and the, the nonsensical of a lot of these movies like appealed to me before. But now that I have seen so many of them, like there are better ways to be nonsensical. There are better ways to be idiosyncratic than this film. Yeah. I mean, that I makes think, sense. yeah, it does because idiosyncratic is what Argento specialized in, but because he gave you so much lushness to look at, it, it almost felt like you were more in a dream or a nightmare. Whereas this is not that, I mean, it's still good to look at. Um, the setting is interesting. I like the idea of this being kind of out in the country. Um, I like the fact that apparently a house was built around a barn is what the house looks like. At it's built around a barn and in the middle of a cemetery. Almost. Exactly. And, and then there's like that cliff where you can kind of see the sunset. Um, that's, that's, that's great scenery. Um, but it is very straightforward. This is a room. This is a study. This is uh, a Donald Duck thing. Um, oh, you brought up the Donald Duck thing already? Cheater. I was going to get to that fucking first. <laughs> um, <laughs> because speaking of that, I, I have something to compare to that when we get to it. But anyway, because it was at that point where I was like, yeah, all right. Fucking crazy Donald Duck thing. Um, <laughs> It's but, kind of a deep red rip. Almost. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's not exactly. A rip, though, it, this movie comes before deep right, red. Right. But, but it's, yeah. that's exactly what I thought of. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, but no, it, it's, it's very flat is what I'm trying to say. Not that that's necessarily bad because again, there are nice things to look at. Um, the art, the artistry of what you would see in the nonsensical stuff from Dario Argento is, it floods your senses. This doesn't flood, didn't flood my senses. Yeah. It's not like Sergio Martino or right. it's not on that level. So Umberto, Umberto Lindsay, excuse me. I don't want to say anything negative about him, but he is kind of, he followed the trends sure. always. Like every movie he directed was whatever was trendy at the time. Um, this movie in that box set is maybe the third or fourth best. And it's kind of almost like a Fulci <clears throat> attempt of a film in, in ways. Um, but with Fulci though, he goes so crazy. Yeah. It doesn't quite reach the level. It right. definitely does not. The gore is not there for sure. Oh, there's no <laughs> eyeballs being plucked out of this. Movie. No, <laughs> which is some of the best stuff in Fulci films. Yes. So you might think I'm crazy for saying that, but it is kind of, I think he's riffing on Fulci a little bit here. Um, just a little, but Carol Baker, I think at the time too, from what I understand her and Lindsay weren't getting along. Um, she came back for one final movie, I think for a paycheck. She was, a fairly popular actress in the U S if not really popular. Uh, her, yeah, I actually her, have a little bit of a note on that. I know her last movie failed. Harlow did not do well. Right. Um, and then she had like in a contract dispute with Paramount and that's when she decided to go to Italy and make mm -hmm. horror and giallo or whatever she did while she was there. Go ahead. Yeah. Her big movie was carpet baggers. Um, yep. and, and that was produced by Joseph E. Levine. Um, I bring that up specifically uh, for uh, for purpose here in just a second. Um, but yeah, he was the one, he's like, all right, we're going to capitalize on this sex symbol status that she reached on a wider scale. She had been around since like the 50s, but right. it was the carpetbaggers where she kind of played um, this hedonistic widow character that like really kind of propelled her. And then, yeah, Harlow failed. But Joseph E. Levine, um, he uh, produced, or at least was the distributor, if not straight up produced or, or presented, um, Godzilla, the King of the Monsters, when it came over here in 1956. Oh, okay. uh, he also presented Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. But then he also produced two really interesting movies the first is magic with uh, anthony hopkins okay and tattoo with bruce stern Review and maude Fellowship. adams oh sorry <laughs> uh, bruce stern and maude <laughs> adams who co-starred with hervey villages in the man with the golden gun so there you go there you go 
There you go. Um, but no, uh, Carol Baker's probably her biggest, biggest movies that she was ever a part of was Giant and The Greatest Story Ever Told. Um, also, How the West Was Won. So there's three that she was in that was re- that were really, really big. And um, Kindergarten Cop. And Kindergarten Cop later in her career, yeah. Yeah, um, I was going to bring that up later, but it's pretty funny. She's the final villain in that movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Carol Baker, Jason, you had said she's radiant. I think at one point that she's just a classic beauty. Like she just look, she's just beautiful all the time. This woman. So she's kind of perfect for this kind of film where there's a woman being, you know, accosted by a killer. You know what she kind of reminds me of a tiny bit is what Tuesday Weld from the Cincinnati kid grew up to become. Okay, I can see that. I remember Tuesday Weld. Yeah. Yeah. Very, yeah. very just, she is the pretty blonde in the neighborhood or whatever. You know, it's like right. everybody likes her. Um, I would, I, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Um, any other pre thoughts before we get to the actual story? Um, hang on a second. Let me see what other notes Why I had. Why did you pick this one from the box? So, I want to know what the other ones were, actually. Okay, so the other ones are So Sweet, So Perverse, Orgasmo, and uh, the first one... Orgasmotron? What is the first... I can't remember the... A Quiet Place to Kill? Quiet Place to Kill. Yes, and I think that's actually the third one in the box. Um, I I think it... the only one I haven't watched in the box, is that one. Yeah, I think... It left quite an impression on me. And quite honestly, I think if I was going to guess why, I think it's Baker's performance. I think it's the the fact that she doesn't say a word the entire film. Um, I find her performance, this her performance in this movie carries it for me. And I think she's great. Um, So I don't know. I just thought it was unique and interesting comparatively. Um, the first film in the box is good and probably a better thriller for sure. Um, so sweet, where, so perverse has a score by Riz Ortolani. I would have, I want to hear that. I'm going to check that out. I, I would recommend the whole box, honestly, even if you didn't really like this one, because now that I watch this one again, I might rank it last in the box. I, I liked Orgasmo a lot. Yeah, Orgasm was really good. I probably should have picked that. And it's almost like an anti-Giallo. I don't even know if it qualifies. But I don't think... But it's an interesting of movie. Um, a really interesting movie. Yeah, I guess... I probably should have picked Orgasmo, to be completely honest. But I do like Carol Baker's performance here. Um, but yeah, they're all all of them in the box are more psychological thrillers than they are giallos. I think they deal with trauma instead of like a mysterious killer. This movie does play that giallo thing off pretty well, right? It is kind of a giallo, but they're all kind of psychological thrillers more so. Which score did you say you wanted to hear? Uh, So sweet, so perverse. It just so happens that the Severin release has a CD of that score. Oh, neat. So, so if you want to rip it. Ooh, I'll I probably just. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well. <laughs> if you want to borrow it and listen to it yeah, one I time. Well, I was, uh, well, was going to say, I bet I find it on YouTube anyway. It prob- could be on Spotify prob- since it was released YouTube. by Severin. Yeah, yeah probably. Um, there. I mean, I, I own his Cannibal Holocaust score. I don't need to own it if you know what i mean it's out there already so right word um yeah no um the only other thing that i had was i was kind of going through the reviews on uh shutter Mm -hmm. (laughs) and there's a there there's a good one on here uh it's a uh it's a one skull out of five (laughs) <laughs> from the umbrella corp so i don't know if we should trust them oh, no. um, probably not but it says dot 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 the dumpster fire continues dot 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 and i'm like oh well that's insightful that, that's the whole review that's the whole review i think that's a bit harsh 
I I think the guy is just. Uh, I think he just has because I know it's a guy. Guys, this is what <laughs> this is what guys fucking post on reviews and channels. Um, but no, he. Uh, I suspect that he um, is frustrated at Shutter because they're not putting enough um, slasher movies on there, um, like like specific ones, like Friday the Thirteenth. Um, well, I would say Halloween, but Halloween's on there. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street. They're not. There's not enough of those types that are like so fucking badass, man. And so he's just impotently raging at at Shutter. I think that's what that review is for. Uh, yeah, I mean, this movie is not a typical <laughs> horror slasher at all. I think you need um, to. I think you need to know. And and I hope Umbrella Corp is listening and not send any zombies after me. But um, right. if you don't know what you're getting into with Italian movies. Even though I, I've already said I couldn't get into this, I'm not saying this shit's a dumpster fire. You know, I mean... I don't think Umbrella Corp even watched the whole movie. <laughs> probably not. They probably I'm giving saw... him a wide berth here. A <laughs> wide berth that he actually is trying to review something. Maybe the dumpster fire <laughs> is the fog in the city early on. There's so much fog. And he's, like, and he's like, I can't see anything. The dumpster this is fire. And he's like, I gotta, turn, I can't it, see I gotta it. turn it off. There, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of soft focus in this movie. Yes, That's there what is. he's referring to. Yeah. 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 Oh, it must be the dumpster fire because yeah. I can't see it's anything. Like, it's all foggy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to give Umbrella Corp a, 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 the benefit of the doubt, if, let's say. I want this is the first time you've ever done Dot, dot, dot. And. No, there's nothing. Nothing. And, and the, 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 yeah, the antecedents. Thank you. The, the, the proceed and anteceed of these <laughs> is the is the cursor. That's it. That's, that's the whole. No, review. I know, but the, but the 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 dot 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 signifies that there is other thought, even if it's not typed. Not this guy's. Not this. This guy had one thought. <laughs> yeah. This whole place yeah. is a dumpster fire, <laughs> and yep. it continues. Then he wrote it wrong. If that was his only thought, <laughs> right. He could have gone. You shouldn't with have ellipses. Yeah, you shouldn't have ellipses. On you can, that, right? right? No, um, you should. You can put the you can put the ellipses at the end. You can't put them at the beginning. Trust me, I'm an ellipses guy. I know what I'm talking about here. All I'm saying is, if his only thought is the dumpster fire continues, there shouldn't be ellipses anywhere. No, that's no, my well, point. Maybe so at the end. It's so confusing. No, not at <laughs> the umbrella, end. That means there's more thought. Like, yeah, <laughs> I want to know what what you're thinking around this thought because you make yeah. it known that you are doing. I so. wish you could <laughs> click on these people so that you can see their other reviews. I was trying. I was de- I was like clicking hard on that. I was like, come on, come on, give me more, give me more. Umbrella Corp didn't find anything. <laughs> Again, we are giving time where it is not needed. Um, That's what I us, do, Chuck. Let us talk. By about the way, lo- look for my look for my special uh, my special episode of Film Seizure at the Movies, where I talk about online review next month. So, oh God, let's uh, let's look for. Your I'm giving. Other... I'm giving. I'm giving time to it, Chuck. I'm giving time to it. Your other your other reviews on Shutter, where you say the dumpster fire continues, and then bring it to light on our own show. Um, oh no, you found out oh, our SoundCloud guy. I would have been. I would have been. Right now, I was going to say that earlier. Dumpster fire continues. <laughs> dot dot dot. He I would have. He will have other thoughts. <laughs> I I I should have I should have used the like the screen name Wesker or something if I was going to try Umbrella or something. <laughs> All I know is only millennials like this movie. Um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that was Drive, not 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 this movie. Oh, my bad. Hilarious. Okay, so Carol Baker plays a mute in this movie named Martha. Yes. Um, we find out a little later that she has experienced trauma in her life because her parents died in a tragic train accident to which they threw her out the window to save her life. I would have liked to have seen that scene. <laughs> There's no money for that. that. That's, that's what you call throwing the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> yeah. They could, they could have filmed that Italian style, though, and just, yeah, yeah. exactly, thrown a baby dummy out of a train window. Ugh. Yeah. That would have been great to cut, too. Yeah. Yeah. Umberto Lindsay is taking himself very seriously in this movie, even though it's not extremely adept. It is a seriously approached, right? Yeah. Um, 
I mean, so we have until Snoopy's introduced. But yes, well, well, I think we're that's going to talk dude. about the that's little earnest. girl. I've got I, notes on I the little girl. I know it girl. is. I know it is. But it's bonkers. <laughs> it is bonkers. So, cousin Jenny is arriving by train, which is a big deal that Martha is actually at. There's the train so many station. trains at that station. There's so many trains coming and going, all yeah, coming. I mean, they were all coming. They weren't going anywhere. They were all coming. Well, I'm sure when they left, they were going. They didn't all stay. Well, they, they came and went. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, but there were so many of them on the same track. The trains in the station have a dot, dot, dot in front of them and behind them. Yeah, that's how that works, Jeff. They all merge. <laughs> the, tra- the trains merge off of separate tracks onto a single track that's in front of the station. I don't know if you've ever been to a train station before. I don't ride no trains. I don't leave yeah. my house. What, they all I, I don't even live in a house. <laughs> <laughs> they merge about a mile up the the track so to speak um well they were going way fast that merge is going to be violent okay <laughs> they were weren't they okay oh, be another baby. there's gonna be another baby thrown out of the tree yeah that's why they have accidents that's yeah. why people's parents die jeff it's yeah, just there's gonna, a, be, there's gonna be a lot of like um like middle-aged blonde mutes <laughs> town <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to be the emperor. middle-aged blonde, uh, blonde hair, blue-eyed mutes. Uh, <laughs> male and female. It's going to be like the village of the damned. Yeah, the, the, every time, every time a, a, a baby gets thrown out of a train, somebody the Aryan says, somebody says the dumpster fire continues. <laughs> yeah. They're the Aryan and, deaf nation. Yes. They're not deaf. They're not deaf. They're mute. Um, mute. Yeah, they're mute. Mute nation. Um, that okay. I I do have a quick question here about um carol baker so when she made this movie she was like 40 um yeah is she playing 40 or is she playing like 20 25 she's 28 Tw- okay thank you perfect That's because thank Did you Chuck. 28 thank you yes because, because it's been f- she, it happened when she was 13 mm. and then it'd been 15 years perfect because um, because I'm, I'm not going to lie the moment or that 26, the, but whatever uh, the, the moment that the, that the uh, magnetic tape was produced, the brain started, it's like, Oh, uh, something doesn't work. Uh, the math was fucking up my brain <laughs> and it was, Oh yeah. Mm, anyway, was it too soon for magnetic tape. Um, no. <laughs> well, no, the fact that she was younger at a certain time, he wasn't doing the math. Well, no, but oh, no, yeah. the, but the magnetic tape is part of the problem because, um probably not many people would have had magnetic tape before the mid 50s or so so it's like so if she was 40 and this was 13 it would have been it would have been maybe a little too early for mass produced magnetic tape in a gotcha. pristine scotch brand uh box the whole well, thing I don't know fucking if- me up this would have been something. This would have been at least three well, paragraphs at bmovieanimal.com. That, that didn't even like <laughs> register for me to anything. Yeah, I mean, it's an Italian movie. You should take your. Oh advice. God! Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I, I forgot she, my place here. <laughs> I don't know if it's insurance money or what, but I think her family has money. She bought this estate on her own that her uncle lives with her. Yeah. Who is hilariously an occult like expert researcher he knows everything about the occult and devil worshiping but but does he though because there were some of the things he was saying that was like very bad it's like dude i know this you yeah know. but you know this you know this in the 2020s he knew this in the 1970s fair enough fair enough before I, before there was like profiling on i mean this is like the, the cutting edge of fbi profiling and stuff right like sure so i mean time. It's like he he is the he is the the foremost expert on on whatever shit Anton Lavey was up to. Yeah, so much so that so <laughs> much so that everybody wants to talk to him, and everybody willingly gives sex maniac information to the doctor. Oh my it's god! Hilarious. Okay, I've got a note about sex maniac. I'm sure you do because sure you do. because that was something else that like like. Uh, like i had a seizure this is why we have this the, like my brain seized up and i was like w- wait we're just gonna jump to sex maniac okay cool this cool. movie so Lindsay, and what i've learned since this time is that these were very popular topics in the italian films sex maniacs devil worshipers druggies 
but they were like, fuck it. Let's give this guy all three. Yeah, he's here's, all three. Here's a bucket with all of it in it. Yes, this guy <laughs> with the crazy eyes. That was cool, three. though. I, I do like that. that guy's it was eyes. a good shot. So let's get to a little more of that. So Carol or Martha and Jenny are heading back to the estate with their crazy ass murderous looking driver marcus um, marcus is an angry fella <laughs> he's really i mean they drive his guiltiness really far in this movie him and the doctor really. dr laurent is 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 another uh red snapper yeah or herring <laughs> very tasty <laughs> yeah he's a red goldfish um <laughs> I can't even speak now, but they're, they're giving, getting a ride for Marcus. And he's like, Oh, the engine overheated. I got to get out and find somebody. And it's really foggy and some lunatic with really cool eyes. I don't even know how they do that shot. looks like he has cataracts or so, like the it's, contacts. It's, the contacts. Uh, it looked marbled. Yeah. Yeah. It did look marbled. It was black and he's, white marbling. Yeah. He, he looks into the window and freaks out. Jenny, Jenny and Martha. Yep. Mostly Jenny that. because she's the first one and she's like, and it's like she goes nuts. Yeah, but Martha can't scream. So fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, you, you, I stand corrected. Yeah. I mean, I really believe that. I'm not trying to be a, smart oh, no, no, I think you're too. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do like how she communicates on the phone by, by the time, like that's it's, it makes sense, right? Like you, you would, your friend, like, like if I was still doing the show and I had become mute, which I know sometimes you guys wish I would. Um, <laughs> and, and all I did was I would, ta- I would like tap things to you and you would know that I'm talking about. Oh, Jeff just know, said uh, fart. Yeah, or I'm talking about Crisis on Infinite Earths or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> or Jason taps David Lynch at us all the time. <laughs> but yes, that is important to note. She does communicate with her doctor, her family, everyone via the phone by tapping on the receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, and they know what she is, what what it's doing. Yeah, she like it's, there's it's, obviously there's a, code a code established. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Um, but they... Uh, crazy ass Marcus comes back to the car um, is crazy ass Marcus when he's there like he he just looks guilty in every scene that's all they try to do he's just so angry he's just so angry Marcos before he gets out of the car says I better turn it off referring to the car before it explodes yep (laughs) and I was like there's going to be an exploding car in this I'm in and it's yeah. very, but it's also very like calm. It's like car yeah. explode. Yeah, yeah that that was a way too nice of a car to be that fucky. Yeah. Well, this is what we call plot convenience in the and, industry, and this is the Italian industry. So yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we we just came. To... We just came from last week's plot convenience, the motion picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I, I do wonder though how much of this like because there's some decent twists I think in this story, but how much of that like plot convenience stuff was just run of the mill then, or people didn't care because it happens so often in like '70s Italian films and even like '70s American films that I've watched is like plot convenience all over the place. Maybe that's not a question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I think it, I mean. I don't even think that this is all that much plot convenience. It's just. The they stopped the car so the lunatic could look in. That's the yeah. only reason they stopped. They the stopped car. right at the lunatic. Yeah, at the, yeah. I mean, that's. Plot that, that's where you pull rapid. off to, to make sure your car doesn't explode. Yeah. Is at the lunatic I mean, in the I road. Mean, fair, <laughs> but. but but when it when it all comes right down to it, you know, we've we've got red herring on top of red herring here, right? Oh, absolutely. So, absolutely. It, oh, well, so that's it, so it's that's not Italian. necessarily so it's not necessarily convenient. They're building walls it's out of these just, red herring. <laughs> it's just yeah. that's the first time that they think that what happens later could be because of that, right? Well, 
I agree one, with you, but I mean, it's, it's more convenient a, that the it's, car it's is more overheating. Of like planting, so you... planting an idea in your head that doesn't exist. Yes, I agree with that. But the car overheating is the plot convenience to make that happen. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I, 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 give that a, I give that a big old pass. That's okay. shocking. <laughs> <laughs> I am shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three people say that's shocking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So this yes, guy doesn't get... give a pass to fucking Peyton Manning, and this fucking he gives but, this but shit a pass. It, but, think, but think about it. Like that guy has nothing to do with anything when it all comes right down to it. Hey, spoiler! Alert. I know, but, th- but that's the thing. Like, you know, if 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 they had broken down somewhere else, sure, there would have been a whole subplot of the movie that didn't exist. But mm, I can connect these dots later. All right, let's let's move on then. Um, but but you need the car to break down to connect the dot, like you, that. Well, yeah, mm. that's what I'm. Yeah, but you but you would just had a, you would have had a different movie, is what I'm saying. Okay, things still would have happened. I guess maybe we you have just a would have had a different thing. movie. Yeah, fair. I mean, the lunatic would have looked in the window later um, at a different point. <laughs> Where, wherever, right? wherever he's following the car, waiting for it to break down. But he's right outside the cemetery. So I guess it is, it's, it's less convenient and more appropriate in a way. But because that's where this guy is hiding out. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Anyway. All right. They get back to the house. We we meet Uncle. What is his name? Mark? Not Mark. I can't remember the uncle's name. Frank. I think it's Frank. Um, Uncle. Uh... Uncle Frank. Let's just call him Uncle Ralph. Frank. Uncle Ralph. Ralph. Okay, Ralph. Okay, thank you. It's Uncle Ralph. Uncle Ralph has a bad heart, but he's also a, a genius when it comes to the occult. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he specifically also, got books from jenny that are also, like crazy yeah. books yeah yeah jenny's like there's zombies in here there's murder death kill there's porn there's whatever the fuck your crazy <laughs> ass heart all, it's all your crazy, crazy right? ass dying heart can want yeah Ralph, well, m- murder death kill it's like she got him the the adaptation of demolition man yeah yeah yeah, I, I'm um, gonna I'm gonna figure out a code for demolition man too when I lose my voice. But you that would, guy, I meant to. Look, you would just use the three seashells to communicate yeah. with us. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I meant to look that guy up because he does show up a lot as a as a character actor. I think you're not even a character actor, just the guy in in a lot of these Italian movies I've seen. I think. Um, but Jenny also has something important. She has the magnetic tape that Jeff had mentioned earlier shut my brain down which has a recording of go ahead jeff you look like you're gonna say something um uh george regard uh is the is the guy who plays the uncle uh same year he was um in horror express oh nice that's coming soon to uh monster mondays so there you go don't you know who would have played the crazy guy in this if this were a sergio martino movie it would hundred percent would have been Ivan Razumov. Oh my God. I cannot wait. I'm sorry. This is totally off the rails, but two <laughs> of my favorite people in Italian cinema are in Raiders of it. Oh yeah. And him and George Hilton. Yes. Yes. So oh my God. I love them. George Hilton uh, would be my boyfriend. All, all, I mean, I, seriously, if you could make every Italian, every, every movie, let's face it with Razumov, Hilton and Finnick, that would be just great. I would can, watch can we, every can, one of them. Can we get a little bit of Eastman in there too? Oh yeah, yeah, I like. Okay, him. yeah, right. sure, yeah. All right, yeah. there we go. Because isn't isn't uh, Re- regard also in all the colors of the dark? I think he is. Um, I'm looking. Oh God, there's so yeah, many. He is. Hot. Okay, I was gonna say there's so many here that are uh, words I don't know. Yeah, like I said, that that man regard shows up like everywhere. Yeah. Um. So. The tape, sorry. The magnetic tape is of probably one of the last times that Martha spoke or sometime in her life where she was speaking. She's, I don't know what, if they mention what play it is. It's Alice in Wonderland. Oh, it is Alice in Wonderland. Thank you. Um, Alice through the looking glass, right? Yeah, it's um, meeting with the 
Oh, is it? The mouse? Yeah, I think. Because yeah. she's talking about how the mouse would condemn her or yeah. she's going to trial and she's going to be condemned. So the queen is right. involved probably somehow. It's the prosecution. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's one of the last things at least that anyone has on record of her saying, um, but she doesn't like it. She didn't want to hear it. She shuts it the fuck off. Yeah. Um, she, she is not wanting any part of that. Yeah. Um, there's a, a couple of things here. I don't mean to go back, but I think this is essentially the end of the first act uh, the way I see it, because everybody yeah. is now together. Um, so there, there are three things I want to, I want to note here first, uh, the title and it comes from Edgar Allan Poe. Mm -hmm. Uh, he refers to fear as a knife of ice, which penetrates the senses down to the depth of conscience. Um, I, I, I stared at that for a bit yesterday and I'm like, that sounds pretty smart to me. Um, <laughs> yeah. and that's, that's why he's Edgar Allan Poe. He has a whole football team named after something of his. Um, but <laughs> most people don't know that. Yeah, the Ravens are named for Edgar Allan Poe. Um, he's like he's I like to his. I went to his grave in Baltimore. I was going to say he's like the Pope of Baltimore. But anyway, yeah. Um, the uh, yeah. So that is where this bizarre title comes because it's it's not an it's not even an easy title to say. Knife of ice. It, it almost makes it sound like you're saying knife of vice, um, which would almost make more sense. Um, which Sergio Martino likes to use that word, vice. Yeah. Um, so then uh, also the opening to this movie, it, it needs to be stated because it is important later. I meant uh, to bring that up earlier. Yeah. So uh, Carol Baker as Martha and Evelyn Stewart as Jenny are at a bullfighting contest. Uh, and Martha's not digging it. Um, no. Nope. She wants to leave. Jenny is like cheering it on. She's excited. Taking pictures. Even. Taking pictures, excited, into it. And we see the whole thing. Um, so we are actually watching a, a bull be slaughtered. An actual, an actual yeah. Yeah, recording yeah. of this. Uh, it's got the spear sticking out of it. It gets the sword in the throat. It gets everything. Um, so if you're not into that, I wouldn't maybe watch the, uh, this movie. <laughs> um well it's only because it's important it, it is important to the ultimate conclusion of this movie it does kind of drive the movie a little bit and, and it does slip scenes back into yeah. so mm, um but you know what i didn't realize at all until i just read this this takes place in spain i didn't know that i thought it took place in italy yeah it's not really stated it makes sense that it's in spain because they're at the bullfight um, I thought that was like a vacation or get, you know, or something like that. I think they actually do say Jenny's coming from somewhere to Spain, maybe briefly. Argentina. Yeah. She's in Argentina coming back to Spain. I don't know. Yeah. They, a lot she of is, Jenny of, is, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it seems like they use filming as an excuse to go on vacation to another country. Oh, so it's an Adam Sandler movie. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> the, the, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it should be said, stated also that Jenny is a jet setter because she is a famous singer. Yeah. Uh, she sings uh, religious hymns of all yeah. things. Yeah. She's like a popular hymnist. Yes. And that, that is an important note as yeah. well, for sure. Um, yeah. Thank you for going back to that. I, I kind of missed it because I hate the beginning of this movie and I forgot yeah. about it. Um, not my thing. So you're right, Jeff. If, if you, if you don't want to see a bull get killed, don't watch this movie or skip the first four or five minutes. Um, where were we? Uh, so we, everybody's now arrived at the, there's only one character that's missing at this point, And that's the little girl, but she shows up soon. Um, yeah. everybody has come over. Uh, they're all excited that Jenny's here. Um, we meet uh, we we heard from dr laurent earlier um when martha called to kind of brag that she's at the train station yep 
breakthrough for her. Basically. Yes. Um, and it's like, oh, your cousin was the was the one thing that could get through to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then um, there is a uh, maid that we're introduced to. Miss Debatable. Uh, <laughs> what? She's, she's debatable. She says, um, when somebody tells her to take their stuff up to the room, she says, oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mrs. Wow, Britton. It's kind of your job. Mrs. Britton. Yeah. Yep. But she's, yeah. I, and I assume that she's also a Brit. Um, <laughs> she's but, a very curmudgeon y woman. It looks like. But there is somebody who melts her knifey, icy heart. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Dr. Laurent. Laurent. Uh, they yeah. have a fling that we find out about later. But, um, which is interesting because you would totally expect Martha and the doctor to be involved in yep. most conventional movies, but no, it's uh, Martha's uninvolved with anybody, but her family members. Um, so, and Jenny doesn't have a romantic, but there's a reason why, but, uh, she doesn't not have in this a rom- town, not, not in this, this town family. at least. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, she really doesn't like the chauffeur. <laughs> No, she, hates <laughs> she fucking hates that guy. Um, she's like, as soon as she sees the eyes through the car, when Marcus gets back in, she's like, take off your glasses. Yeah, take off your glasses. Let me sunglasses. see if you are the fucking freaky guy. Yeah. Sex maniac, devil worshiping killer person. Guy. <laughs> that, that I just made up. And the, yeah. and the cops are totally going to buy. The um, cops will know of this soon. Yes, they, they will know that any murder is done by a sex maniac, devil worshiping hippie. Oh my god! They even call him a hippie. It's fucking wild. Yeah. Well, because he is a hippie. Um, he, he I is, know, but but he's he's like the Jack Nicholson type of hippie, where it's like he's still like he's dressed a little too cleanly. Where he's, he's a, a sex maniac, hippie. devil worshiping kind of hippie, because that doesn't jive at all. In my opinion. well, well, in exploitation, <laughs> the hippies were sex maniac, drug fiend, devil worshiping hippies. That's fair. So hippies in movies um probably are the reason why i don't like them today they were the rednecks of italy right, right. Uh, no they were the rednecks of every movie ever from 1965 to 19 2020 fair 19 2020 i remember right. that year yeah. it was a long fucking year it was um, <laughs> No, exploitation loves to to treat hippies like they're devil worshipers. Yeah, fair, fair. I had and and oftentimes bikers as well. Bikers for sure. Yes. Yep. So we learn at this point Martha lost her parents, as I mentioned earlier. And when her parents died and she was thrown out of a train, her voice stayed in the train. Um right? Because she didn't talk anymore. Yeah. Right. She threw it all the way to the train and it stayed there as it Yes. Yes. No, it just didn't go with her. It stayed in there. <laughs> she uh, was thrown so hard, so fast. It was like a cartoon. Like, yeah, it was, like, it was like pulled separated out. from her body. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so everyone goes to bed in the house. The doctor leaves. There's like a little soiree, right? Yeah. Everyone is. Everybody's excited that Jenny's here. Yeah. 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 It's like a Jenny. Jenny's back, which. Cool. Um, <laughs> But everyone goes to bed. The doctor apparently leaves. Uh, Marcus is scowling and murdering people with his face somewhere. <laughs> no, he wants car- to be left the fuck alone in the basement where he lives. He yeah, lives the in the quarters, garage. The well, yeah, but he's, him, yeah. he's constantly in that garage and they lock him in there. <laughs> yeah. No like wonder he's in. so angry. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the servants' quarters is, so I guess we should assume they're in the garage. Um, <laughs> so there's a crash in the house, and Miss Jenny, who's just arrived to town, um, goes to investigate. She hears Martha in her room, listening to the tape of her voice. That was well. We even see her, her in her room. Yeah, she starts it. She starts it in her room. Um, and then we cut to Jenny, and then Jenny goes downstairs to the crash, walks by Martha's door again, here's the tape, goes down there, there's a bike wheel spinning. Jenny looks in the car, and a character I thought would be along, around for a lot longer is fucking murdered. Right. right, right. Yeah, yeah. The, the character I thought would be around a lot longer, considering she's the second cast, you know, second person <laughs> to listen to the cast, um, is Jenny, and she dies. <laughs> That's what I just said. Right, I'm but so confused. no, I thought <laughs> you were gonna. Chuck. 
I know. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that the person you thought would be around a lot longer was Jenny. But no, you said was murdered. And I'm like, wait, murder. And, and I'm like, I had to, I had to do the math. like magnetic yes. tape all over again. Yes, Jenny was the one that was walking and investigating, and then she died. Sorry for not saying her name again for people who aren't paying attention everywhere on the internet. <laughs> Umbrella Corp is going to fucking kill me. Oh, he's going to get you on this one. <laughs> dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. Oh, dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, Jenny gets lopped off and somehow rolls under the car to the other side of the car. I don't know how she does that, but she does. Um, it happens. The next day, we meet Jeff's favorite character in this movie um, because she comes over to visit Martha. And who is it, Jeff? I'll let you talk about her. Good old Christine. Your yeah. favorite character. So Christine While just kind of hangs around. Yeah. No, they're, 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 they're conversation hearts. This is how I would communicate when I go use with conversation. Yeah, she's somehow the priest's. Yeah. She's somehow the priest's daughter, which I don't understand. Well, well maybe uh, the priest became a priest later in life. Yeah, it, good point. it doesn't have to be a Catholic priest. It could be that's true. Alien, Episcopalian. It, it looked like a Catholic church. Maybe that's why I thought it. Well, was. Anglican and Episcopalian look very Catholic because yeah, they're fair. derivative of Catholicism. Fair. Yes. Yeah. Fair. Fair. Um. So, yeah, so she just shows up and hangs out with Martha because apparently people who are mute are, are childlike and are, are friends with the children. Um, and she just likes Martha. Like, that's her best friend. I can see why, because I wouldn't be her fucking friend if I was her age. She is a monster. Well, she, the, this the, almost qualifies for an episode of Monster Mondays because of this little girl. Well, the, the, the priest dad or whatever calls her something. Uh, it call, does he call her a human avalanche? Yes. Yes. Is that what what it is? I couldn't quite make it out, but it, but that makes sense. <laughs> she is yeah. a human avalanche. <laughs> she is a bit much. I, I I mean this again, and I'm not making excuses for her, but it's such an Ita- she's such an Italian like kid in this movie. Like mm. all these Italian movies have kids that are like annoying Bob. Yeah, something. They're just, yes, they're 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 not well written because yeah, they're just, at all. They're just a prop. Kids and they're also these movies are props, and, and yeah. they're also usually dubbed by grown people, yeah. probably yeah. men. Which, which makes <laughs> it, hi Jeff, which I'm makes Christine. It really unsettling, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's it's just, it's so much coming at you. <laughs> you better never fucking never fucking never take off this necklace, or I'll kill you. Oh my god, she gives her a Snoopy necklace. Bought it with my own savings, you know. <laughs> and I'm thinking and I'm sitting here, first of all, I'm I'm floored by the fact that there's Snoopy merchandise in Europe in nineteen seventy two. It's phenomenal. <clears throat> Number two No, Umberto Lenzi went to Disneyland that summer. They filmed another Giallo there. Well, that's even more amazing because <laughs> Behemoth is not part of Disney World. Um <laughs> good point. <laughs> got it right (laughs) that's amazing (laughs) i know my i I know my ips god damn it um but then uh 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 uh, the fact that it's it's large it's a large pendant it is a very large pendant yeah and the rope it's on the, the the chain that it's on is also extremely large um, this thing would be like like a fucking Mr. T thing if you put it on. Flavor like, Flav would wear it. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't she doesn't she say to Martha, it's like you like Snoopy, don't you? Like like but but you know who really likes Snoopy is is what's her name? Alice? Christine. Christine. She really likes Snoopy. She likes she, Snoopy she and likes you're Snoopy. gonna make sure you and fucking do too. Exactly right. Like yeah. she wants to be surrounded by people who love Snoopy as much as her. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, you nailed I mean, that, Jeff. Whatever that I mean, was, the, little, the little girl writes in her diary to Snoopy. And yeah, she, gets, she, 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 she starts she her diary it. entries, dear Snoopy. You've been bad. <laughs> Guys, this you're giving girl, away the story. It doesn't fucking matter. This girl is a maniac. 
and might be the killer. She's a human avalanche. I'll tell you what, she deserves to die. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this little girl deserves to die. <laughs> Yeah, she loves Snoopy so so much. Yep. <laughs> That's not the reason why. Although she draws Woodstock too. Did you notice yeah. that? Yeah. She, yeah. She writes to Snoopy and draws Woodstock. Is this this is just like shoehorned in to capitalize on the fact that they're trying to get this movie popular in America, right? I mean, they want uh, Italians made these movies to bite off of American cinema a little, right? And try to get them sold there. But I mean, um, they were mostly really popular in Italy. I mean, <laughs> I agree. They were agree making a lot of money in Italy. And I just think that like stupid in Germany a thing. Maybe, maybe I think yeah. they did want the breakthrough though, too. But I mean, I, right. I guess, I mean, my guess is, is that that wasn't officially licensed. The Charles Schultz company should have a word with this guy, yeah. with this movie. Oh, I'm it sure they definitely did. was not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As a guy who's bought some, um, not licensed uh, uh, things. I know, I know. I could see it in that in that dull gray that was shining <laughs> back at me. That shit ain't are you, licensed. Are you telling me when you when you borrow that tape from or that CD from Jason, you are gonna rip it? <laughs> well, I'm ta- I'm talking about. You can come over sometime, and I'll show you the exact Transformers that are uh, knockoffs. <laughs> you mean <laughs> Godzilla and Optimus? <laughs> Yeah, or, or, or Optimus Prime. Prime. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I like Optimus Prime. <laughs> Hit rid. Um, <laughs> so no. yeah, this, the lunatic child comes over and gives away the. <laughs> oh, I got. Child. She is a lunatic she child. Is. She is. <laughs> Like she's almost as believable as a potential killer as Marcus. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh boy. So yeah, while she's over there, uh, she's gifted a kitty by Martha. For or no, no, because, she's gifted a kitty by somebody. She brings the kitty there, and she's like, "Look who fucking crazy person gave me," or whatever. Right. right. It's like this. This thing is going to be in great care with me. Yeah, the I'm not going to murder child it. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the girl who'd grow up to be Dahmer. Um, <laughs> but the cat, like, while she's chastising it for being a crazy little kitty, goes and runs it, into the... cat the- is being a cat. <laughs> yeah, the cat's being a cat, but that's not good enough for Christine. No. Um, uh, she will die and become the soul of a car. Good point. He's going to dress um, that cat up like Snoopy. I know it. Yes, she is. Um, Poor cat. Or give it a blankie. Like hmm, Schroeder. Yeah. Like li- Linus. Linus. Linus, thank you. I messed that up. Um, <laughs> Schroeder played all the these piano. Disney, all these Disney characters. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, the, the, very, the very popular MGM character of Ronald Ruck is about to show up later. Ronald oh, Ruck. my God. Ronald <laughs> Ruck. Um, he creates quite a ruckus. He does. Ronald Ruck. Um, the cat goes into the garage, you know, curiosity and all that. Gets a lot of paint on its belly and feet and walks back out. And Martha recognizes it as blood um, because she's been thrown out of a train before. So she knows exactly what blood tastes like. Um, she actually licks the blood off her finger. The, yeah, she tastes She's it. a lunatic, too. Everyone's a lunatic in this movie. Um, <laughs> It's Italian. It is Italian. She goes in and finds poor Jenny murdered under the car. Um, then we have cops who show up. Oh, no, she starts. It's pretty cool. She communicates by laying on the horn a bunch of times um, because she's a mute. She can't scream. I do like that. Uh, the doctor, we find out that the doctor's car was near the garage at the time of the murder. And there's kind of a recountance um, by Marcus. Marcus is like, hey, Mrs. Britton was in the window. The doctor was like, hey, sexy lady, why don't you come down here? And she was like, nope, not coming down. You come into the garage and he goes in the garage. And then he doesn't go inside. He decides to leave. And this was around the time that Jenny dies. That, that, is, some, that, is, that is some sexual escapade. 
it is you got i i yeah you go up to the window and she's like nope and you're like all right i guess i'm gonna go home i guess i'm just gonna go home and jerk one off yep he's gonna go (laughs) home with his blue balls he's just gonna he's just gonna rub one out on the way home (laughs) yep and then he's gonna go to the funeral (laughs) the funerals happen immediately after deaths in this movie it's yeah i mean they they buried her bloody I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't don't worry about putting their favorite dress on. Just put her in. Just put they, it. No. They didn't even buy her a coffin. They just they had rolled they her have in. all the holes like pre dug too. It's just <laughs> yeah. ready to go. They just they just remove a tarp. <laughs> yeah, the killer just calls up and says, "I'm going to kill someone tomorrow. You might want to get a plot ready <laughs> yeah. for this person." Um, all the I do want to mention. I'm looking at the uh, Wikipedia page. Apparently, they say that the script is similar to Lucio Falci in the second line. I did not steal that from that, so I probably sounded like I was reading the Wikipedia earlier. But I was oh, no, I am similar plot line. I guess is maybe yeah. the same, the same. Oh yeah, don't torture a duckling. Yeah, oh. reminiscent of works by fellow Italian Lucio Falci. But that's neither here nor there. I just try not to steal my info from Wikipedia, and that's on the second line, so I have to say something. Um, so yeah, we go to, yeah, we go, (laughs) we go to the funeral and wild eyes is looking there again. And apparently he leaves a cult of the devil relic behind when he runs away. This is funny to me. And this is like, because it's made by the same company that made that fucking Snoopy. It 100% (laughs) is a stamped, a stamped metal. (laughs) She got it at Disney world. (laughs) Yeah. Sell them down at the market in Madrid, you know? Yeah. They they sell it at Disney Madrid. Yeah. (laughs) I just like how they call it the cult of the devil in this movie. Um, (laughs) It's so official. There's a better word for it. It's called a Satanist. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not in this movie. You're sex maniac, devil cultist. Um, (laughs) But even like, okay, so they show him peering at everyone. But the place that he was hiding, he would have had to have been laying on the ground looking <laughs> at his stone. He was, he, was, he was just standing there. <laughs> yeah. But he was shrouded by something. Maybe, maybe he thought that the necklace granted him invisibility. Or maybe there was more fog. And we oh, just didn't see it. There is a ton of fucking fog in this town. The dumpster fire was fucking burning. <laughs> continuously. Um, yeah, so... Hold on. I just I just read a note I wrote last night. I was I was a little um inebriated watching this movie. Uh-huh. So so I'm reliving some no. of my notes here. <laughs> and uh the, I wrote this would be a movie Hitchcock would make if he had been hit in the head with a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it'd be hilarious if he came in profile style to begin it, and then he just gets knocked out. <laughs> and then when he turns towards the camera, he's like all cross-eyed and like, yeah. and then he makes the movie. Yeah. <laughs> well then, my notes are my notes are not nearly that good. <laughs> um, so the next, I, I might be skipping stuff, and it's okay if I do. Martha's at home. And we find out that the cat that Christine had brought over has been killed. Yeah. Probably by the Satanist sex maniac. Mm. Who's on I'm not, I'm yeah, not betting know. on that. I'm not, <laughs> no? You don't think so? He lives in the backyard in the cemetery. I'm pretty sure. Well. You think it, was like a, it was a Satanist sacrifice? Yeah. They just, but they just left it there. I don't know. I'm not buying it. I, I'm not. That's not even where I'm going with this. <laughs> Okay, I'm look, Christine. I'm, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe the cat just did itself in. I mean, it's yeah, like fuck, <laughs> fuck this girl. I'm out. <laughs> it's like I don't know if I if I just don't land on my feet this one time, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, dude, you the, like you could have a whole movie of the eight like yeah. nine attempts of suicide, suicide by a cat. Out, yeah. <laughs> Like how many of these do I have? No, <laughs> I've jumped out this window seven times. Like what if? Yeah, what if cats don't have knowledge of their nine lives? Like, well, this is just a kitten. <laughs> this is just a kitten. This yeah, is so it, it is learning and as the only it goes. Thing, and the only thing it has to learn from is Christine, which doesn't know shit about shit except Snoopy, 
Who's a yeah. dog, not a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's amazing. All right. You've um, been listening to Film Seizure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking the uh, fucking <laughs> incredible blunt force trauma Hitchcock strikes again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after the cat is killed, Jenny's bags, which were delayed, um, show up at the the train station then are brought to the cops i think and then jenny has to go because of customs i don't think the to check through the bag there. it was like no it was it was customs, it was um, customs. Yeah. jenny jenny only brought one bag for herself to get by a couple of days yeah the rest she, she sent the rest her other bag shipped right and so it went through rich. customs right exactly but wouldn't the police like immediately confiscate all that i mean it couldn't have anything to do with the murder i think maybe well, I, I mean know. i think they'd want to check her personal belongings she just got murdered you know maybe there's a clue in there i mean i don't know i mean that seems a little intrusive you have a you have a search warrant for those for that for that I for mean, that luggage of panties that are probably in there sir i'm just saying <laughs> there might be there might be evidence to solve her murder in there yeah it's just there a bag it's a, just a bag full of panties that's probably hammers, dude i don't know hammers. what you want to <laughs> All I know is that something in that That's the panty, script. <laughs> bag full of- something in that panty bag gives Martha a bullfight memory yeah. and she hates bullfighting. The whiff. So, it's a whiff. Oh fighting. god. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that's yeah. She yeah. You know, it looks like cousin Jenny certainly had a bull over before she Jenny's left. Jenny's underbees would make bulls charge if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I'm not going to explain why. Um, Mar- <laughs> Martha Oh runs no. Out. Oh no. Mar- <laughs> Thank Jeff you for just getting it. that, Jeff. Jeff. Watts too. <laughs> Thanks for just getting it. Um, <laughs> Jenny runs, or Martha, excuse me. Jenna's, Jenny's not running anywhere. Um, Martha runs out into the fog, gets lost. Um, somehow the doctor shows up, as he does very often. Like He's I, a I red tuna. You, I thought you just left, doctor. Why are you still here? Um and he's like, hey, you're supposed to be with Martha you, or Marcus, you crazy lady. She's like, I was with Marcus. And Marcus is like, hey, I killed everybody. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with that's kindness. Pretty much, how that goes. Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty much how that goes. He's wearing shoes that Martha's like, oh, shit. Those, so we've had the eyes that were related to Marcus somehow. Now the shoes that she saw in the fog that are related to Marcus somehow. Uh, Martha doesn't like his shoes. And she goes to him. Then we find out that Uncle Ralph has been enlisted by the police to investigate a black mass. <laughs> Which is yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> Funny, Uncle <it's> expert. <laughs> yeah. Let's bring in fucking about to die Uncle Ralph. Who is <laughs> to look and he's like, oh, I think they had a black mass here because look at this black wafer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's the black body of Satan. It's got, it's got this <laughs> altar set up and like the goat's head painted in blood behind yeah. it. The goat's I, I'm head, at by it. the I'm way. Looking at it. it looks so goofy. I'm looking it, at it. it like, is, well, maybe, well, maybe it looks spookier at night. <laughs> I, I, it, it looks like a comic strip drawing. Like, but a comedic one, like, like it's like fucking from, Garfield or, or something. It look, or, or it looks like it was like pulled out of a chick track. You know? yeah, well, I no, mean, it's it's it. childish. It it is <laughs> like I want this tattooed on me. <laughs> Christine drew it. <laughs> oh, yo, absolutely, she yeah. she is the same child. Just say, <laughs> let me just say, Satanists are not bad people. They just eat black wafers and draw <laughs> cartoons. I mean, it's fine. It's, fine. it's so cute. It's such a it's cute. Like they're very devil. cute. The black yeah, they're wafer. Very cute. The black wafer nearly killed me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that is that a thing because I hope it is. I, I mean, don't... it might be like the black mass is everything look in, it up. In, in reverse, right? So it's the Catholic I mass, guess. but it's but it's all inverted. So maybe that would be a thing you would invert. So what is it? The antibody of Satan? I mean, instead of a white wafer, it's a black wafer. It's just all opposite day. Yeah, but that's the body of Christ <laughs> and the antibody the body of, of Satan. Satan. Antibody. The, the antibody. Yes, because it's reversed. God, Jesus! It would oh, be the geez. it would be the antibody of the antichrist. Yes, thank you. Anti, so get it? 
<laughs> it'd be the body of Christ. Because the antis would cancel out. The antis out. would right. cancel out, but then it wouldn't be an anti anymore. No. But what, wait, wait. But what this about, what, what, what about the panties in, in the bag that was sent from Jenny's Art panties? Things? Yeah. The panties. Jenny's panties. <laughs> the panties of Jenny. All right. Yeah. We've arrived. We've arrived. We've arrived. Um, like, I don't see anything about Black Wave for Sear Guys. <laughs> no, they made it up for this movie. Um, it's at this point that I wrote a note. This movie has all the stuff drugs, sex maniac, devil's cult, Christine, mutes. Well, like it has everything. We we should just say, though, that, that the, 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 they, they see the cops come and they see Jenny's body. And the, it smash cuts to the cop, to the detective man saying, well, what we've got here is a sex maniac. Well, that I mean, that's the thing. Well, there, there is a little bit of like therefore logic that the doctor throws oh, around. Oh shit! There's, le- there's yeah, no, therefore no, but logic. Then, but then he's like, it can't be. It can't be. It's like, wait a minute. You just said therefore. <laughs> yeah. Right. There. Yes. This is like. I think I made mention of this early on. Umberto Lenzi just throws in all the fucking stuff <laughs> that's in any giallo in in Italy in the late sixties. And I think this is what 72. So we have movies with sex maniacs, devil worshipers, druggies as killers and all that. And Lindsay's just like, let's just throw it all at this one fucking character. It's really <laughs> kind of wild. And it's one of the reasons that I like this movie, but it's also one of the reasons that my education of Giallo has kind of soured me on it a little bit. Right. Cause I'm like, they're just throwing the fucking kitchen sink at you. The entirety of this movie. And all the colors of the dark was 1972 as well. Like 1972 is just a hot year for Satan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yes. <laughs> Satan is well, so, it, hot. Well, it's so hot right now. <laughs> Anton LaVey's book, The Satanic Rituals, was 1972 also. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. <gasps> Numerology, guys. It's here. It's here. Black we, wafer? We need to find two no more black wafers. instances. So we have oh. six, 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 six. Six. Sure. Six. Six. Uh, Martha doesn't like Marcus's shoes, black mask, black wafer. <laughs> Satanists apparently That's really killed... trying to get things back on track. I'm reading my notes. <laughs> Satanists kill women. That is a known thing. It is. In this universe. I mean, Ralph no, said. right uh, here, guys. Right here, if you look up black mass on Wikipedia, what's there? A drawing of a woman being killed. Yeah. That's and just I bet happens. I bet these anti-priests are fucking sex maniacs, too. Yeah, probably. One thing that should be noted is that there was a woman found on the side of a hill covered in rocks who was also killed. Which, which was a, known, a little more. Right. And it's a, it's a it's somebody that our hippie knows. Yeah. Well, we don't know that the hippie knows it at this point yet. But yes, the hippie does know that girl. And it is why the cops are thinking sex maniac and not necessarily this is related to this family because that murder is totally unrelated right like it can't it well looks the same. unrelated murders must equal sex maniac also. yes <laughs> yes it's italian logic um <laughs> it's, a, it's a roman logic sometimes i don't even know what my fucking notes mean here but i well, know we're getting, could, we're getting pretty close to marcus telling uh telling mrs Britton that he ain't fucking driving her to the store today <laughs> no go ahead yeah yeah yes because <laughs> this is exactly where my notes are it, it, the car is broken so i can't sure drive sure no he, that's not true he just didn't want well, to the car was over no the car was overheating two days before jeff I mean, but but on. he even if that car wasn't broken he ain't driving her to the fucking store he doesn't no, want anything that this is Britain. He hates he wants everything. To fucking kill her. <laughs> he wants to kill her. She wants to kill him. They both want to kill Christine. So she rides uh, her bike to the store. Like and, the wicked witch of the fucking West. Right. And comes back with nothing. No. Uh, okay. So this is typical. This is like going to the general store and dropping off your order. And then the people get it together and bring it to your house. Oh, that's what I think happened there. Like you go in, you give your order to the, the clerk. The, they does, give, the, does the Snoopy store deliver? All I know is that groceries are delivered all the time in Italian movies. Fair enough. Fair enough. To this, houses. That's all I'm saying. I mean, it's it was it was 1972 Instacart. So yep, 
yep. except for you, you had to go in there. You had to go there, though. You couldn't. You couldn't have the internet back then. But you up. saw, him, yeah, <laughs> you saw Marcos <laughs> go into a knife a shop with like three thousand knives in the window. So he's guilty. I think that was a. I think that was like a meat shop. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't he went matter in there to buy knives. Yeah. He went in there to buy three thousand knives. <laughs> um, we have your wing- order of three thousand knives, sir. We deliver yes, them to they're you. They're in the window. Grab them. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> It's pretty wild how overt they are with that. Um, but again, what I love about these, I really love that about these movies. It's like, God, you're really hammering me over that. You're kniving me over the head with this. Right. right now. I love it. Um, I don't allow those concessions for a lot of modern movies, but I do for these older ones for some reason. And apparently, but, supposedly, so does Jason. And I find that hard to believe <laughs> it is crazy jason's like i give this movie all the passes 10 stars i don't give this movie all the passes. I, gave, I gave it one i felt reasonable pass <laughs> which is practically 10 out of 5 i gave it all the passes because <laughs> <laughs> i have to exaggerate jason it's no fun if i don't <laughs> but mrs Britton witches her way down the road she's on a bridge and she's like <laughs> exactly that's the music i heard in my head while well, she's she's definitely the wicked witch of the west um but what does she find cartoon devil on tree written in apparently blood yeah maybe or yeah honestly it was it was just cherry (laughs) kool-aid yeah it was cherry kool-aid or it was like a cranberry off the tree (laughs) (laughs) but but it is perfectly drawn just like every other cartoonish devil that's been around exactly the same all of them are exactly the same yeah i mean it's not perfect but they're identical yeah yes yes Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to correct you because they're not perfect. Um, wow, well, they are to me enough to where I will scar my body for it someday. <laughs> yeah, I hope you do. I really oh, boy. Do. I do. I'll, I do want I'll to. <laughs> get knife advice tattooed on my butt cheeks. <laughs> knife on one cheek of over the crack and ice on the other cheek no i'll just put an f next to my butthole (laughs) this episode is off the rails somebody looks at it and they say what's knife ice and then i'll fart Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm making that appointment tomorrow so we can make this happen. All right. Boom. My mouth's writing checks. My body can't catch. Oh, well, or your better. butt. <laughs> so while this is all happening, Martha is in her room um, sleeping the day away, waiting for everyone to return. But she realizes when she wakes up that Mrs. Britton hasn't come home. And the doctor's like, hey, I'm going to go over there and find out what was, why Mrs. Britton hasn't come home. I don't understand why Why the doctor does that. Why? Well, I, I mean, the doctor, doctor has in, invested interest in her I guess, home. yeah, he wants, yeah, he wants to. He, he wants to check out her of. He wants to put his stuff in her up. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. Should we just re- re-record this episode? No, oh, no. Not. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. And guess what? Next week is the craziest movie of the bunch. <laughs> have you seen it, Jeff? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I thought so. <laughs> of course I have. It was going to make it somewhere, somehow into whatever i do somehow right yeah yeah but what happens next we find out after the argument and the doctor's like hey why didn't you call the police and they're like oh immediately we sent crazy eyed marcus to look for her because he didn't kill her um right like right. nobody has any suspicion about this lunatic which is hilarious to me well he's uh, been a loyal asshole to the family for so long a loyal <laughs> fucking googly-eyed monster <laughs> and she like she has already begun to suspect him like literally well, she can't tell loyal. anybody 
No, she can't. She well, she could tap it out. <laughs> She'd be like, <laughs> tap it. And out. everyone would be like, "Oh, you think Marcus did it?" And she's like, <laughs> <laughs> "I don't know if you could hear that on I, the I mic." I could hear it. <laughs> okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry, everybody. <That's> good. <laughs> oh, but boy. Uh, <sighs> yeah, and then okay, so they they find. Martha's body. She's been killed. Um, then Martha sees the stranger's eyes in her in her head, and then a bullfight, and then Jenny, and then the kitty dead. She's having a like a nervous breakdown, right? She's got too much trauma in her life. Um, Uncle Ralph finds the letter from Satan <laughs> under the door, which says, "What does it even say? I can't even remember what it says." Like. Yeah, you got I any black you wafers? Mommy's dead or something. I'm out of black wafers. Yeah, I'm out send of black more. wafers. <laughs> she send black wafers. Um, <laughs> food coloring in there <laughs> for your neighbor to borrow. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please, please send food co- black food color? <laughs> if, you don't, <laughs> if you don't have black, red and red and green do fine together. <laughs> yeah, a little blue would make it even more believable. <laughs> <laughs> um, or all of the blue <laughs> yeah all the colors of the dark no yeah, that's what right I mean. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i don't know if it's around this point she's seen flashing in the in the cemetery from a flashlight i don't know but all i know is that Mrs. Britton was buried like seven hours after she died. <laughs> yeah she had no family to report this back to even though yep. she is a mrs yeah, no family, and they're in. She's a Mrs. Britton. She, she yeah. was married to somebody, but who? <laughs> well, right um, now the worms. <laughs> yeah, she's married to the worms. Marcus is staring at at radiant um, Carol Baker's legs while she's kneeling down. Um, and yeah, at this I point, didn't understand that. What's what's that about? Is that sex a, maniac? Yes. Okay. Because it's like, we don't yeah, need okay. To go further. It's like, okay, it. there's nothing, there's nothing weird here. It's a knee link skirt. It's, it's, it's black stockings. Is that your thing, Marcus? Is that it? I know it's some guys maniac. like that. Is sex maniac thing? Okay, totally, totally, one hundred. Because it's like, it's like, well, I mean, she is dressed for a funeral. I mean, that'll do in a pinch, but it's not exactly sexy. Not. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it will do in, in a pinch, though. <laughs> So the doctor is supposed to take Martha to someplace. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, no, yeah. He was going to take her to oh, wait a Archimedes minute. or something. It doesn't really matter. He was going to take, gonna take her someplace to be safe. And now it's starting to bleed over into another movie that Jason just started watching. And like, well, we got to move her because she needs to be safe. And, and now I'm getting real confused. Okay. Well, I'll try to keep you on track here. Yeah. I um, think, I think for a couple of minutes here, I need to, I need to be like Martha and tap out. Okay. <laughs> tap out, tap out. The doctor cannot leave town now though, because he's got to work all night because someone's pregnant or something. Um, so Martha has to go home for the night. And there is, is kind of like, I will say the music in this is kind of unsettling. Even Stephanie agreed. She was laughing at a lot of this movie, but she was like, the music is unsettling. And she didn't hate this movie, but she, Steph, like if I can get her to say more than okay, is a fucking monstrous achievement with almost. I was going to say, does she like anything that you've made her watch? She does. She, uh, I can give a list later. I will (laughs) say she called one cut of the dead. Brilliant. Perfect. Um, yeah so she's it is. Yeah, yeah it is it is so she she likes stuff that's really good but i don't think she gets into the genre cinema nearly as much as i do like that's you unfortunate. have to yeah you i mean you have to have a lot of concessions for a lot of these films well it's right? it, it's it's like uh it's like what john water says you have to have a good understanding of taste to have bad or to have wait you have to understand bad taste to have good taste yes fair Something like 100%. that. I probably fucked that up. Come, 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 come at me, umbrella bro. Yeah. Lights go out at Martha's, though. Like, the lights are out now. 
and Martha's wandering around the house. She needs to get new drops for Uncle Ralph. Um, the gate and the front door are open. Martha ends up passed out on the floor. Um, she's found passed out on the floor by the cops. They're like, hey, we need to go in there because the gate's open. I guess that's a thing you do in, you know, when you see a rich person's gates open, you're like, that's not normal. They're probably dead. In there. I wouldn't know. I'm, I, I've never had any kind of wealth in anything whatsoever. No, but you usually investigate people's zippers being down, don't you? Or is that somebody else that does that? I, I mean, I, yours, was it your zipper that was down when the statement was made that's hilarious? Or was it somebody else's zipper? Oh, no, it was, it was Ken who said that. But anyway. All right. Well, are you staring at my cock? That one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. I said that part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah, you have gate investigators out there. That's what happens. Is what I was trying to get to. Um, but then we go past this, and they're convinced it's the sex maniac went in and knocked Martha out, and they've localized him to. He has to be in the cemetery. So we're going to send all our guys in there. We're going to find them. Um, they trap them against the wall. And then there's this really wild conversation about the investigator having a flu with the doctor. Do you guys recall this? Cause it, yeah. it's like they're yeah. laughing at each other and stuff. I'm like, this is really weird. Yeah. I actually made a note. His, the, the, the flu cure is eight days in bed and stay there. Yeah, yeah, eight days in bed and stay there. And then they laugh. Yeah. And I'm like, why are they having this conversation? Because <laughs> they're both like, oh, I can't do that. I'm an investigator. I can't I can't stay in bed forever. But they've caught the sex. <laughs> I mean, this isn't that big of a town. I mean, I think the investigator could take a day off. Not when there's a sex maniac. I, they're beat cops around. Drug yeah. guy. Fair enough. I mean, that's, he's like the trifecta of shit. Investigator <laughs> cannot take a day off. But they caught him. So everything's fine. Movie over. Hey. Right? Well, Wrong. no. Wrong. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, so is this the time when... Um, the hide and seek? <laughs> when, when Donald Duck shows up? <laughs> Almost. There's a hide and seek game first. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, she brings Donald Duck, I think. Is Christine gift her Donald Duck? Somehow Donald Duck shows up. I'm not sure. I don't remember. How. No. Uh, uh, I thought, uh, no, uh, uh, Martha gives Christine Donald Duck. I thought it was going to be another cat. And I was like, please don't. Yeah, no more cats. Well, you can't. No. You can't we can't trust this person. The throat of Donald Duck, though. Right, because Donald it's Duck. plastic. Yeah. And and it, but you can wind it up and make it do creepy shit. It is creepy. It is. I wouldn't want it. I no. want one. <laughs> I totally creepy. want one. I want one too, and I'm gonna kick it down my stairs. Yep. Um, I'm gonna punt that fucker right down your stairs and scare you. Yep. Scare the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> but they they end up having a hide and seek game. Christine and Martha in the yard because everything's okay now. Everyone's happy, um, even though a bunch of people are dead. They've caught the sex maniac. Yay. Yeah. Except. But, but does somebody else want to go? Go ahead. Somebody go. I don't want to make this episode 40 minutes longer talking. <laughs> um, no. So, um, well, hang on a second. I don't even know what my, where I'm at with my notes here. Let's see no, here. I don't either. <laughs> Hide and seek game, guys. All right. I'll continue. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Martha and Christine are playing a hide and seek game. Uh, Martha gets the, the, uh, what do you call it? The handkerchief put over her eyes so she can't see anything. The doctor has just left, right? And Martha takes, Ralph is up in his room doing something, I don't know what. But Martha takes the blindfold off and she starts clapping for Christine. And Christine doesn't show up. So Martha runs up to Uncle Ralph and is like, hey, you know, I had the blindfolds on. I couldn't see her in her communicative way. They all start looking and find out that 
the doctor is kneeling next to the dead body of Jeff's favorite character, and he cried. Yeah, I did. Um, I will tell you one time that I cried when it when it concerned. I just found this in my notes. This is great. This does concern concern Christine. <clears throat> she uh, so so Mrs. Britton wants to go to the fucking store, right? And 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 um, oh, Mrs. Uh, Britton's alive again. Well, I'm just going back to the scene where like Marcus is like, "Fuck you! I'm not taking you to the store." Why don't you bike yourself there, you witch? And uh, but then uh, Christine shows up and it's like, Mrs. Britton, can I come along? I can be useful. Immediately, Mrs. Britton says, I'm in a hurry so long. And it's like, yeah, that's that's appropriate. Um, I did cry because I laughed so fucking hard at that moment. <laughs> Mrs. Britton, like me, would want nothing to do with this little girl. Uh, <laughs> nobody does. Nobody does. Um, She's a human avalanche. She is. And now she's going to avalanche her way right into an open grave in a couple of hours. Um, yeah, but we're not going to give her a funeral. <laughs> no, nobody would show. Um, no. It would be a waste. So just roll her off a cliff. She's yeah. Gonna, roll her. She's going to land and that's it. Um, yeah. So. Um, so, yeah. So it's like, well, but 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 Martha was right there. Meanwhile. You have a uh, sex maniac tells his story about the the girl that they found that they were partying and and she uh, OD'd on heroin. And he freaked out and didn't know what to do because if he took, takes her to the hospital, that's bad for him. But if he just stashes her someplace, they don't ever have to know that they were involved. Well, um, so they have to go and exhume the body of the girl, which they catch just in time before they couldn't do the autopsy and discover that the um, that, 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 that the girl did die of an overdose. OK, great. Meanwhile, uh, un- Uncle Buck uh, has a heart attack. And he has to be taken to the hospital. And when Martha shows up, uh, Dr. Laurent's like, um, yeah, he's dead. It's like, sorry, he didn't make it. We're going to bury him in about an hour. It's like, okay. We called, we've already called up the, the cemetery. They've already got a, a patch for him. <laughs> um, <laughs> so now uh, there's, there's the concern of the sex maniac. Um, there is... Um, uh, they they have a suspect in custody, but they've basically, outside of the fact that he has to pay for not uh, not you know saying that she died or whatever, he is basically off the hook of the other murders. Um, but um, Martha is now home alone, and they've got some coppers stationed outside, um, who are almost just as good as the coppers in stage fright. Even they, better. You know, even, they, even they just better. leave. They just leave. They're like, yep. Bye. Yeah. Hey, I'm supposed to protect you. My guy didn't show up. So good night. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy shows up and he's like, yeah, it looks fine from about 400 feet. I'm out. <laughs> and he just leaves too. Um, it, it, but what we, we, he gets called to do something. So at that point now, there's somebody roaming around inside the house. Martha has nobody to get help from. She tries breaking windows and, and flagging people down. um, But the cops, can I stop you for one moment? Go for it. Can I mention that one, I I assume while I was away, you mentioned that uncle Ralph died. Yes. So they showed that uncle Ralph is not dead. Just correct. Correct. So yeah, I didn't say that, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was saving that for the big reveal. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, no, I said that Uncle Buck died and he was going to get buried <laughs> in about an hour. <laughs> he has much more nose hair than my father. <laughs> <laughs> so he, um, he, so he goes, uh, or so like there's this, there's this person, very clearly a man in a fedora walking around. You see a shadow. Uh, and, and Martha jumps out the window and runs to, um, the basement uh, where mausoleum uh, yeah that's right it's a mausoleum and uh as she is hiding in the mausoleum 
um, somebody launches that fucking Donald Duck down the stairs at her, and it lands perfectly and starts waddling towards her. It's like maybe she is in the house at that point, and then she runs again. But no, it was no, it was it was in the it was in the mausoleum because it's like okay, um, because it's like where the fuck did that come from? But then I thought of Deep Red, and I'm like Deep Red's so much better. But anyway, Deep Red's so much later though. But that is, is later and like, better. <laughs> the shot of it going down the stairs and landing perfectly and going, it looks like one cut. Yeah. So I don't know if they got real lucky or what, but it's pretty well, awesome yeah i don't know um but so uh the 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 shrouded man walks up to martha and it is um marcus marcus and then in comes the doc and he's like where well, first no 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 back you up just a little bit marcus starts to walk up to her and she's holding a gun that's right she starts firing the gun but it doesn't go off or it like it's blanks it's making noise but there's no bullets and then (laughs) it does not stop marcus at all (laughs) no marcus is like i'm gonna fucking strangulate you bitch yeah i I am a super marcus (laughs) but she makes the first sound like this is important she makes the first sound she's made in the entire movie which is a scream starts screaming yes um and then the doctor comes in and he's like aha your uncle figured this out because crazy ass Christine wrote a diary entry to Snoopy that said, you were a bad boy and you were found bloody by Mrs. Britton. Yes. So what the fuck were you doing there? Yeah, she Mrs. does. Oh, that, that, that should be said that when Martha loses Snoopy earlier in the movie, um, Christine does not take it well. No, she's like, you said you'd wear it forever. And she's like, I packed it because I'm going out of town. Right. And yeah. she's like, you must never do that. That's like, fuck yeah. you, get off me. I'm going to yeah. kill you. Yeah. She's, she acts like Willie. Yes. Um, from last week's movie. She's except like, hey. for Willie is so much more likable. Yeah. Except for he shoots people right between the eyes. Between the eyes. Yep. Right between yep. The eyes. I mean, like you said. Um yeah so anyway so yes and she wrote a diary saying that she found it which then basically implicates martha and then in comes uh uncle buck (laughs) you keep calling him because i don't i mean these names are starting to get all messy he comes Uh, in and he's like hi i'm buck melanoma molly russell's (laughs) ward i won't do this again sorry i've done it before on the show (laughs) i've gotten it wrong but close um Um, but but they they yes unless you want to explain this jeff no go for it martha killed jenny because she was jealous of her voice and she was reminded of something she had lost too, which was yes. all, that was their breaking point with her with her trauma. Yes, Martha killed Mrs. Britton because I don't fucking know. Uh, because uh, 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 hang on a second here, um, killed Mrs. Well, Britton to keep up the appearance of a sex maniac. Yes, to keep up. Uh, thank you. Yeah. There, there was no real motive yeah. in that one. It was just to and keep then- the keep the heat off of. Being able to be narrowed down to a family member. Yes. And then she killed Christine because Christine's journal entry, which implicates her, as you explained before, because Snoopy was there. He told Snoopy. Yes. And and just because she was Christine. (laughs) Yes. And then Martha, who we'd heard that tape of her talking about being condemned and you know from alice in wonderland so alice in wonderland and this is what she starts reciting in this scene which is kind of cool too i kind of like it yeah there is a there's a haunting nature to it yeah um yeah and basically it ends with her being led off apparently uh, um not led off led right not let led led off yeah led led she's being led off to go to uh, the clink. Yeah, she's going to get prosecuted. Basically, that's why she's saying this shit. Right. And apparently, um, Uncle Jimmy, or whatever his name is. What's his name? Oh, my God. Uncle Ralph. 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 God damn. Ralph. Ralph uh, is going to die alone. 
That's that's the real sad part of the story. It is. He saws Marcus, who will walk around trying to kill him with his eyes. Well, but he he will have his work in in his, his books. Yes, he, yeah. he will. He will. Whenever a new sex cultist shows up, uh, he'll be he'll be ready to to offer his services. Yeah, he'll be the leading investigator on that. Okay, so this movie definitely not as good as I remember. No, it, and I uh, think. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you saying? Finish your thought, Chuck. Yeah, this movie is definitely not as good as I remembered, but I still like it. I think there is, there are things here that are actually kind of admirable in the storytelling. Like it does try to twist you around, which a lot of giallos don't have the, or, or movies in general don't have the heroine being the killer. Like, that is a cool thing, right? And it, yeah. I don't know that it's perfectly handled in this movie, and it's a little wonky. Like, how did she get away with some of these things? Absolutely are questions of mine. But I let them go for the actual the payoff, which uh, the, I yeah. personally enjoyed. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, like, there are there are some missing tissue here, though. Like, for example, um, it would have been nice for her to, um, like, the broken vase, which is what Jenny hears that leads her ultimately out to the garage, right? Right. Um, I feel as though it would have been better or at least more, a little bit smarter if that was the doctor sneaking in to get up to Mrs. Britton's room and he accidentally knocked over the vase. We don't know that it wasn't though. <laughs> well, we don't know, but yeah, fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. it, it I, did I it. think it is similar in way to stage fright in that some of the things that could have made the narrative better are just left out. Yeah. It's like, we don't, we, we just need to crank this thing out, you know? Yeah. Um, it's, um, I yeah I mean I I don't dislike this movie but it's um it's just that there yeah I, I don't know uh, Quite like frankly like the the cat dying why Wh- who did that was that this was that the quote unquote sex maniac or was that or did or did uh, uh um was that another thing that Carol Baker did to throw the scent off of her um or or any potential scent off of her. i assume i assume that but it's also unexplained so um it would have been nice if there was any scent on her um because now it just kind of feels like the end was like well we need a twist ah she did it and here's why and we work backwards from that well it all makes sense why she did it and i think even well, Stephanie it will make sense i'm saying the story the narrative explains it at least. it does but whether it, it, she it would does, have done that is another matter right it, it, he, it is still a little bit working from back you know working from the conclusion backwards i i, I totally agree I, it's it yes that's um, kind of that's kind of what like bothered me about the ending it's like oh it's that and isn't that what all I'm not. I'm not making excuses for this film, but think about other slashers. But I think you other... could have plugged in any killer. Is the problem? You could have plugged in almost any killer and made up a story at the end of the movie to explain it. I think that's the point, not the problem. But I could be wrong. I mean, that's just not to me. That's just not that great of storytelling. Maybe. I mean, they were trying to make you think it was a sex maniac. Devil yeah, but, but they, it could have been. Guy. It could have been Uncle Ralph, and it could have made up a story for it. You know. Yeah, like he's pissed he's going to die. Yeah, but you're or, not or he, up, or he became talking, a sex maniac. You guys might be right. But let, we're talking about a mute here <laughs> who was jealous of her cousin who could sing. Like that's not working backwards. That is obviously but there could be forward. Yeah. But the the rest maybe is written backwards. Maybe. Well, I mean, but then you could say it's like, well, this hasn't come up in the last 15 years. You know, I mean, no, she can't tell anyone. Or but, why would she tell anyone? But she could have acted on this breaking psych, you know, this 
the psyche that's breaking, she could have been slowly working towards this. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just, I'm sure she was slowly working toward it, but showing that would have ruined the payoff. Right. I mean, I mean, I guess, if, but if you knew, if you knew that, that, um, I can't even remember his damn name. And I know you got from scream, the killer and scream, his motive had to be saved for the end. Her motive has to be saved for the end. Uh, or you know fair. who the killer is like, the, that's the way these movies has to work. Unless you know, who the killer is at the beginning, like in stage fright, you have to hide the motive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah. But, but, but things should make logical sense. And I guess it kind of does, but it just feels to me like the, you could have written a reason for anyone to be the killer in the last 10 minutes of this movie. Maybe. And, and I, I don't want to spend and, a whole and lot. Most movies don't, aren't going to allow for that necessarily. Yeah. And I won't, I won't, I won't defend this movie to the death at all. Like half of these, half of the Giallo that I watch don't have any rhyme or reason as to why someone is killing people. Right. Like right. Why somebody did it. It's just a reveal. Yeah, um, and I think you have to allow that for, to enjoy these movies. And I personally do. And I don't think this movie is great. I could, I admitted earlier, I probably should have picked orgasmo from this box set or something else from this box set or even something else in general, um, to work on. But I really do like Carol Baker's performance in this. I think I just she's do. pretty awesome. Anyway. Yeah, uh, she's, I will say she's easily the most interesting piece to this movie. Um, you know, I mean, she has to do a lot without uttering a word until the yeah. final 30 seconds of the movie. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's not, that, that should not be overlooked. I think it's commendable. Yeah. For sure. Um, all that being said, any more thoughts on this before I let um, Jason tell us what's next week? Go ahead, Jeff. If you well, know. I was going to say the one me. thing that we kind of did um, didn't exactly gloss over. There is a point to the whole uh, uh, bullfight is that um, that also kind of led her to be cruel too. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's like, here's this person that has what I don't. And then bringing me to this thing where I'm actually seeing something I don't like for the very first time, it, it just helped kind of. And you won't let me leave. Right. You won't let me leave. So in a way she was kind of, I mean, in a lot of the way it was, you know, Jenny may not have been that great of a person um, really in the, in the long run, but um probably shouldn't have been killed um yeah i mean this movie does on a curse cursory or a surface level kind of examine trauma a lot mm -hmm. but not in a super deep way but it is kind of like taking a look at how people deal with trauma in their life yeah. not in a not in an ultra meaningful way for sure yeah i mean it is about a a, a traumatized person who is dealing with a lot of uh, uh, trauma right in front of her. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Jason? Anything else from you, my friend? Or anything at all? No, no. I mean, fair to middling for me. Um, mm -hmm. But I did, but there are some things I liked about it for sure. Cool. Well, hey, what about next week, Jason? Where are we going to conclude our trip? In we're going go, to go to Atlantis. Yes. Atlantis. I wonder if it's right off the boot. Like right <laughs> off the, like. In you mean the it's boot. right there in it's, Sicily? It's right there in Sicily, yeah. Right it's the near boot. a boot there. <laughs> near a boot there. Raiders of Atlantis. What is this, Joe D'Amato? Is that who made this? Or uh, um, No, he did Endgame. This is, uh, oh my God, who did do this? Uh, now I got to look. You can probably hear me typing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diodato. Yeah. Uh, right. Ruggiero Diodato. Yes. Oh, so. yes. This, this is a movie. Holy shit, man. 
this is talk about chi- ki- chicken talk about chicken sink. let's talk about, talk, about, <laughs> talk about kitchen sink man <laughs> this thing has got it all it's it's, it's got a nothing. little bit of uh it's it's got a little bit of uh mad max it's a little bit um yeah. It's a little bit like a fucking, I don't know, aliens of some sort. <laughs> yeah. um, this is this is kind of our um, oh, robo war of this month, I think. Yeah, I, I, I would like to say that it, it is common on every trip to Italy that uh, that you will eventually shit your pants. <laughs> and that's yeah. that's. That's next week. Um, this is, yeah, this Jeff's is, panties this is our, are going to be brown. Yeah, this is our first like real Italian knockoff movie too of the of the month. Yes, the other three were not right, right. Um, and this is not a, uh, a giallo uh, whatsoever. No, However, a it, purse ninja. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is uh, this also has Mike Monty in it. Uh, Mike Monty. I'll talk a little bit more about him next week. Um, I like Mike Monty for multiple reasons, but he was an American actor who, who was in a bunch of these Italian movies, uh, but well, yeah. international movies in general. So, and you also mentioned earlier, Jason Isaac Razumov and George Hilton, as far as male actors in Italian cinema, are easily my favorite that I know of, and they are awesome in this movie so they're i cannot fantastic wait. in this movie yes they're great <laughs> and, and they're kind of together in a way that's different than usually usual with them it's usually george like, hill like villain and hero kind of right but yeah this one it's oh my god it's so good <laughs> george hilton's character in this is phenomenal yeah like i love him so yeah i can't wait to talk about this one it's yeah so we're gonna do that next week um speaking of next uh next monday um, we are uh, in week number four of the Millennium Era Godzilla month with uh, Godzilla Tokyo SOS, the only sequel in the entire Millennium Era is the sequel to the Mecha Godzilla movie just last, that we just talked about uh, on Monster Monday. So do that. Um, all of these things can be found at filmseizure.com. You can also follow us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, subscribe to us at various places uh where you can get podcasts so your stitcher tune in spotify um you know your google apple audible soundcloud that's pretty much it um and youtube so subscribe to us in these places it's fantastic yeah we like our subscribers most of them at least i don't know a lot of them. I like all of them. I like I, every one of them. Um, anyway, so we also, um, I also do B Movie Enema on Friday mornings. You can check out uh, new articles there. I'm currently in Andy Sedaris month. Um, mm-hmm. This week is a movie called Guns. That's it. It's just called Guns. Uh, Eric Estrada gets exploded in this movie, and it's fucking great. Oh, it's. I gave up, I gave up the ending, but he fucking gets blown up by a bazooka. No. indoors at close range it's fucking great um, that sounds like it rivals the tape cassette throw that blows up the dude in the movie's name i can't remember you know we're on the beach and he throws him the tape and it blows him up what movie <laughs> is that <laughs> yeah that's uh that was avenging force or no yeah, no, 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 no uh invasion force, force movie invasion force, force. Movie. yeah thank you sorry yeah um yes so um yeah it, it's it's andy sedaris knows how to blow shit up let's put it that way and it's normally done by a babe blowing up somebody or something it's great it's great um so yeah you can go over to bmovieanima.com catch that uh this friday morning i probably wrote about four thousand words about a stupid andy sedaris movie starring eric estrada you so, would i would I, that's what i do that's what i do around here so Anyway, those are all the things that are happening um, until next week when we go to Atlantis. I have been Jeff Arbuckle. It's a me, Chuck. I'm Snoopy, and you have been <laughs> listening to Film Seizure. You've been bad, Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs>